As we know, equations are often graphed. Thus, let's make sure we can adapt our new knowledge about function notation to graphing. As before, we have our grid and our axes. Our horizontal axis is still commonly called the x-axis, so that's the same. Now the y-axis can be shown in a couple of ways. If we were just graphing one function, some people might replace the y on the vertical axis with f in terms of x. As we know, the f in terms of x just replaces the y in our equation. But more commonly, the y just stays as y and the graphs themselves are labeled, like this. And that way we can have multiple graphs on a set of axes. And the function notation still allows for easy communication this way. Example 1. Determine f in terms of 2. Now we don't have an equation, but this does indicate that we're talking about function f, so this graph, and the two in the brackets tells us that our variable x is 2. So on the graph, we're just looking for x equals 2. And then we determine what the value of f is when x equals 2. So we follow up from x equals 2, and we see that on the graph f here, we have a y value of 2. Therefore, we know that f in terms of 2 is equal to 2. Example 2. Determine g in terms of negative 1. Pause the video and see if you can figure this one out. We're talking about function g, so this graph. And the negative 1 in brackets tells us that the variable x is negative 1. So on the graph, we look for x equals negative 1. And we determine what the value of the function g is when x is equal to negative 1. So we follow it up from x equals negative 1, and we see that the graph here is at a y value of 4. So we know that g in terms of negative 1 equals 4. Example 3. Determine x if f in terms of x equals 4. So this one's a bit backwards. In this case, we're given the function value or the y value, and we're asked to determine the corresponding x value. We're talking about the function f, and the y value of function f is 4 right here. So we just have to follow that down to see that x equals 10 at this point. Therefore, we know that f in terms of 10 is equal to 4. Or, the value of x is equal to 10 when f in terms of x equals 4. They both mean the exact same thing. Example 4. Determine x if g in terms of x equals 3. Pause the video and see if you can figure this one out. We're talking about function g, and the y value of function g is 3 right here. So we know that we just follow that down, and we see that x equals 3 at this point. Therefore, we know that g in terms of 3 equals 3, or the value of x equals 3, when g in terms of x equals 3. Again, they both mean the exact same thing. Example 5. Determine f in terms of negative 6 plus g in terms of 8. This one involves both graphs. Let's just replace each with the appropriate values. x equals negative 6 here. And we can see that the y value of function f 
at this point is zero. It's right on the axis. So we replace f in terms of negative six with zero. Next part, x equals eight here. And we can see that the y value of function g at this point is one. So we replace g in terms of eight with one. And now we're simply asked to add zero and one for a total of one. That's it. Example six, determine g in terms of negative one minus f in terms of negative two. Pause the video and give this one a try. Again, this one involves both graphs. Let's just replace each with the appropriate values. X equals negative one here. And we can see that the Y value of G at this point is four. So we replace G in terms of negative one with four. And X equals negative two here. And we can see that the Y value of function f at this point is one. So we replace f in terms of negative two with one. Now we're simply asked to subtract four minus one for a total of three. And we can notice that this represents the vertical distance between these two points. 